This is part 28 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss layout view in ASP.NET Core MVC. First, let's understand why a layout view is required. Most of the web applications in general have these sections, a header for the website, a navigation menu either on the left or on the right, website footer and then each view specific content will be plugged in at this location. Without a layout view, we would repeat all the HTML for these different common sections in every view in our application. With this duplicated HTML in every view, maintaining our application would be a nightmare if for example, we have to add or remove a menu item from the navigation menu or change header or footer. We would have to do this change in every view, which is obviously tedious, time consuming and error prone. Rather than having all of these common sections in each and every view, we can define them once in a layout view and then inherit that look and feel in all the views. With layout views, maintaining that consistent look and feel across all the views becomes much easier as we have only one layout file to modify should there be any change. The change will then be immediately reflected across all the views in our entire application. At the moment, within our application, we do not have a layout view and if we take a look at the two views that we have, index and details, notice the common HTML elements like HTML, head, title and body, we are repeating them in both the views. If we have a layout view, we would move these common elements into the layout view and then each view will only contain the content specific to that view. We usually place layout views in a shared subfolder in the views folder. So let me right click on this views folder and add a new folder. Let's name this folder shared. Just like a regular view, a layout view is also a file on the file system with a .cshtml extension. You can think of a layout view as a master page in ASP.NET Web Forms. Now let's go ahead and add a layout view to the shared folder. In this add new item dialog box, search for razor. Notice we have different razor file types and one of the options here is razor layout. Notice its file name starts with an underscore and the same is true even for razor view start and razor view imports. The leading underscore in the file name indicates that these files are not intended to be served directly by the browser. We'll discuss view imports and view start files in detail in our upcoming videos. For now, let's go ahead and add razor layout file. Notice the file is named by default underscore layout dot cshtml. You can give it any name you want, but I'm going to stick with the default name. From our previous videos in the series, we already know views that belong to a specific controller are placed in a subfolder that has the same name as the controller. At the moment, within our application, we have just two views, index and details, and both of these views belong to the home controller. That's the reason we placed these views in this home folder. A layout view is not specific to a controller, and that's why we placed it in the shade folder. It's also possible to have multiple layout files in a single application. Perhaps one layout file for all the admin users and a different layout file for all the non-admin users. Now look at this auto-generated HTML in our layout file. The common elements like HTML, head, title and body are present in our layout file. This means we can remove all these common elements from all of our view files. First, let's do that within our details view. Let's also remove the closing HTML and body elements. Now let's do the same in the index view as well. With all these changes in place, let's now run our application. Notice we see the list of employees as expected. Now let's view this page source. To do that, right click on the web page and select view page source from the context menu. Notice in the HTML, we don't have the common elements like HTML head, title and body. We only see the HTML that is specific to this index view. Why is that? That's because at the moment within our application, we have a layout view, but we did not tell these individual views that is index and details to use that layout view. 
Before we do that, let's understand the two razor expressions that we have in our layout view. First, look at this render body method call. This is the location where view specific content will be injected in the layout view. For example, if our index view is rendered using the layout view, then the HTML that is specific to the index view, in this case, this HTML table will be injected in the layout view at this location where we have called render body. Notice this second expression here. We are using view bag to pass page title from our individual views like index and details. We cannot hard code the page title within the layout view because different views will have different page title. View bag does not provide IntelliSense and compile time error checking. So using it to pass large amount of data from a regular razor view like index and details to a layout view is not great. But for passing something very small like this page title, view bag is okay. Now let's tell our individual views, that is index and details, to use this layout page. For that, we include a razor code block and then set the layout property. The value for this property is the path to the layout file. To get to the layout file, let's start from the root project folder indicated by tilde. In that, we have a folder with name views and in that, we have shared and in that, we have our layout file underscore layout dot CSHTML. Let's also set a title for this view. Notice in the layout page, we are looking for title dynamic property on the view bag. So let's use the same property to set the page title to employee list. Now let's do the same change in our details view as well. I'm going to copy this code block, paste it within our details view and then change the page title to employee details. At this point, let's save all our changes and then reload our web page. We have an error. Look at the message here, invalid expression term equals. I think this is because we are already in a razor code block here and we are using an additional add. We don't need that, so let's get rid of that. Let's do the same thing in index.html, save our changes, and then let's reload one more time. There we go, we have our employee list is expected. Now let's view the page source. Notice the page title is set to employee list, and we also have the common elements like HTML, head, title, and body in addition to our index view specific content. Now let's navigate to slash home slash details and view the page source again. Notice for this view, the page title is set to employee details as expected. Notice at the moment we are setting this layout property in each individual view. What if we have 100 views in our application? Do we have to set this layout property in all the 100 views? Imagine the maintenance overhead if we change the name of the layout file or if we have to use a different layout file. We have to change the code in all the 100 views. There's a better way to do this. We'll discuss that in our upcoming videos. A layout view provides consistent look and behavior for all the views across our web application. It is similar to a master page in ASP.NET Web Forms. Just like a regular view, a layout view is a file on the file system with a .cshtml extension. The default name is underscore layout.cshtml, but you're free to use a name of your choice. This file is usually placed in views slash shared folder. An application can have multiple layout views. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching.